Voici Point Pleasant, un petit village de moins de 5000 habitants niché au creux des montagnes de la Virginie occidentale. Almost heaven, presque le paradis, comme le dit le chanteur John Denver dans une de ses chansons célèbres. Au beau milieu de ce décor montagneux, au confluent des rivières Kanawa et Ohio, la petite ville de Point Pleasant abrite des familles sans histoire dans de jolies maisons de campagne. Selon toutes les apparences, c'est un cadre parfait pour une vie simple et paisible. Sauf que, dans les années 60, Point Pleasant bascule dans la terreur. Une série d'événements obscurs, certains inquiétants, d'autres catastrophiques, s'abattent sur les habitants du village. Au cœur de ces événements, une étrange créature ailée que plusieurs jurent avoir vue de leurs propres yeux. Depuis, Point Pleasant est devenu l'un des villages les plus visités des États-Unis. À longueur d'année, des adeptes de phénomènes paranormaux viennent pour tenter de comprendre ce qui a pu se passer ici il y a plus de 45 ans. We kept the kids in at night. We didn't allow them out. Six to seven feet tall, gray in color, uh, large wingspan, 10 to 12 foot wingspan. Seven foot tall with a wingspan of 50 feet with glowing red eyes. Six feet tall with the big wings and the red eyes, because everybody says there's red eyes. Like, you can't miss that detail. Those eyes, that's, that's what hell did. It was just a red. A lot of people says it glowed. I don't know about that. I just know it was a red like you never seen red. Uh, one person thought it was a helicopter. It was so big. Another local guy here, he thought it was an airplane. Other people described it as looking like a giant moth because it didn't have a head like a human. It was more in and it had moth-like wings and so forth. Other people described it as, uh, you know, being very quick as far as flight. You know, it would, it would appear and then it would, be, it would disappear. My papa always said it was just a bird because he used to go out there all the time. But he said he saw something out there, so I'll believe him. It had a heel like we do, a heel and a long foot out with claw, uh, toes and claws on the end of the toes. It had a neck like we do that holds a round type head. It had a nose like we do, and I saw two holes that you breathe out of. Tout ceci se passe au milieu des années 60. Une centaine de personnes prétendent avoir vu une créature mi-homme, mi-papillon aux yeux rouges étincelants traversant le ciel. Durant deux ans, les témoignages se multiplient. À partir de ce moment, la vie à Point Pleasant change à jamais. Well, Point, Point Pleasant, as it is today, is a very simple, it's a, it's a simple place. And back in the 60s, it was even more so. You had hardworking Americans, farmers, and people like that. They really didn't take stock into monsters or UFOs or anything like that. They worked long days and hard days, and there were down-to-earth practical people that went to church on Sundays. This isn't, this isn't something that they plotted or planned. It's just something that happened and they couldn't explain it. And even today, all these years later, it's still a mystery. Some of those, those uh, Mothman witnesses, uh, um, you know, became very, uh, you know, they su suffered nervous breakdowns and, and uh, mental issues and things. And totally different people as to what they were beforehand. Over the years, you know, they just, they never could come up with a, a viable answer as to what, what happened or what they experienced. A lot of people in the town getting thought messages, so they said, uh, saying that something was going to happen. Some people were even having physical effects, like their eyes getting swelled up and red and so forth for no particular reason. In fact, I think a lot of people that had up close encounters of this Mothman creature. Uh, said that their eyes got inflamed and what have you. It could have been like a, an angel of death or an omen. Like the personification of an omen of coming to warn people that something terrible is going to happen. La tension monte d'un cran à Point Pleasant lorsque certains affirment que la créature mystérieuse n'est pas là par hasard. Sa présence annoncerait l'arrivée d'une malédiction. When the bridge fell, it actually tilted to the right, came back up, and then just went down. That is, instead of a collapse like sometimes we see on TV or uh, in pictures, the eyewitnesses said that it actually went to the side, 
then came back up and went down. du 15 novembre 1966. Ce qui se produit précisément ce soir-là donne naissance à la légende urbaine sans doute la plus terrifiante qu'aient connue les États-Unis. Il y avait deux jeunes couples uh, near the North Power Plant dans la TNT. C'était une zone vacante, désolée, à un moment time during World War II. C'était une factory d'ammunition. C'est comme ça que nous avons appelé la TNT. Ils étaient en train de conduire là, à 11 o'clock at night. Um, they came across what they thought was a man standing in the road in, in front of their car. They noticed something standing next to the plant, uh, which looked like a very large man in dark clothing or uh, a cloak and what have you, and they noticed these two glaring red eyes. And the Scarberry was one of the witnesses said that uh, they were about the uh, size of baseballs, about two inches apart, and then she noticed wings flapped around on its back, and she said they reminded her of Angel, Angel's wings. As the car got closer, she said the wings came out, and this creature or, or being or whatever ran into one of the, the uh, vacant power plant buildings there called the North Power Plant. And kind of spooked the ladies, and they picked up speed, and they noticed as they looked behind them uh, that this thing was actually chasing them. That's when this thing came over top of their car. Uh, they were doing 90, 95 miles an hour in, the, in this car coming back to town, and intermittently this thing would come over the car then disappear come over the car and it chased them back into the city limits and then it disappeared and they were thoroughly terrified but they got home uh, and told their story and during this time that started the the ball rolling on the whole mothman legend as it is one of america's creepiest urban legends immediately after the the two couples saw this thing in the TNT area, they went to the sheriff's department. Now, the sheriff's deputies saw how upset they were. They knew that they, you know, they weren't making this story up. Uh, they sat down and wrote down everything that they encountered. And then the police went up there to investigate. They started running regular patrols. This was on the 15th of November. On the 16th of November, uh, Marcella Bennett and her family actually encountered this thing at, at a house up in the TNT area. Le témoignage de Marcella crée une commotion dans la communauté, en particulier dans sa famille. I asked my sister what it looked like one day. I said, Marcella, I need to ask you what does it really look like because I was there time after time but never really got to experience it. And she said, you know what, Carolyn? She said, we were just getting out of the car. We were talking back and forth over top of the car, not paying a lot of attention, not thinking about anything. And I heard something like shh, shh, shh. And she said, we turned around and looked and it was trying to come through the doors, which they drove trucks and tanks and stuff through them doors, and said that they it wasn't the doors wasn't big enough. And I said, well, then how did he get out? And she said he went sideways and came through and flew over top of him. She said, when I looked up and seen them big red eyes, he said, we were out of there. I can't tell you what the rest of it looked like. You can go right down the line through November. You know, there was all kinds of sightings after that. Then the police department started taking it a little more serious. Le récit incroyable de cette fameuse apparition marque un point tournant dans l'histoire de Point Pleasant. Les villageois comprennent qu'ils doivent maintenant compter parmi eux un nouveau voisin très menaçant, une créature énigmatique et effrayante. Le nom Mothman est désormais sur toutes les lèvres. The name Mothman was actually given by a, a news reporter during some of those press conferences in the early days of the Mothman uh, sightings. People always ask, well, how did that, how the name Mothman come about? At the time, in the mid-60s, as a little kid, I used to watch the Batman TV series, but there was also the Batman comic book series. There was a character in that comic book series called Mothman. And because people were describing moth-like wings and red eyes, that name Mothman stuck. Now, a lot of local people still to this day refer to it as the Big Bird. Whenever the Mothman was first spotted, uh, it practically covered all of our news areas. It was, it was in the newspaper, big write-ups, and uh, it was on the radio, TV, uh, word of mouth, everybody was talking about it. I mean, it was, it was different. It was a piece of something that they had never experienced before. You kept your kids in at night, your little ones, you didn't let them out. There's 
newspaper account came out of uh, a big, large, six-foot bird with a large wings wingspan and red eyes were chasing cars in the TNT area, which caused a mass uh, amount of people to head for the TNT area to see this this massive bird that was out there chasing cars. That's how the story grew. Even some of the news channels picked up on it. That's when everybody came to started coming to Point Pleasant, including John Keel. The late author, John Keel, uh, really spent a lot of time on this whole thing. He's, he stayed there for several months, I believe, or years, doing research for his work. Uh, he took it as premonitions. And I believe that it was 2002 they came out with a film uh, well, based on his book, The Mothman Prophecies. John Keel est un auteur intéressé par les phénomènes paranormaux. En 1975, après son passage à Point Pleasant, il publie un livre qui rassemble les plus incroyables témoignages sur les apparitions de la créature ailée. When the Mothman was here, things that happened, and it was a little different, and people were scared because, you know, you're a little scared of what you don't know. And they didn't communicate with him, didn't know if he was going to hurt anybody. He didn't hurt anybody, but uh, there was an animal killed, but it could have been a coyote. But you didn't know what was going to come up. And people was a little nervous. During the Mothman sightings here in Point Pleasant, they would not let some of the children out for recess because the people didn't know what this thing was. They thought if it was a big bird, it could come down and pick up a little kid and take off with them. So that's how, how paranoid some people were when all this was going on. It was called The Bird, where a, a location where a lot of people were, were seeing the Mothman, uh, known as The Bird, uh, was the North Power Plant, and it was generally known as The Bird House. I think it was tore down in the early 90s. It was uh, deemed a health hazard, and then they did tear it down, which is kind of a shame, because it would be like a great landmark. mark. We went up there looking for the Mothman all the time. Don't know what we'd have done if we'd have found him. Uh, I wish I could have said, yes, this is what it looks like. But, you know, it was something to do, and you're curious. And, uh, and we went, but we had carloads. He wasn't going to come out when we were there. Certains ont peur, d'autres exigent des preuves. Plusieurs continuent leur routine comme si de rien n'était. Mais Mothman devient un sujet de fascination pour l'ensemble de la population de Point Pleasant. Quelle est cette créature? Et pourquoi s'est-elle cachée dans une usine désaffectée? Les événements à venir fourniront peut-être des réponses à ces questions. Les résidents de Point Pleasant pensaient avoir tout vu en termes d'apparitions étranges. Mais il semble que non. Pour ajouter au mystère et à la confusion semée par Mothman, un autre phénomène obscur vient perturber la quiétude de ce petit village. During this whole period, 1966 to 67, uh, people were reporting strange lights in the sky. So we have the UFO connection. That makes it even more stranger than it already is. There was a lot of UFOs in the area at that time. Did I believe it? No. But we would be, my sister and I would be going to Buffalo and we'd come out and look and there'd be beautiful lights in the sky and we'd say, well, the UFOs are out tonight. But did I believe it? No, I didn't. And one landed in my brother's backyard. So then I believed it. He said it was the brightest thing he ever seen. And it couldn't, you couldn't even look at it, it was so bright. And it just picked back up and soared back off just like it come in, no sound. Mothman, puis des ovnis. Les nuits de Point Pleasant sont décidément très agitées. Mais les villageois ne sont pas encore au bout de leur peine. D'autres étranges créatures font des apparitions, cette fois en plein jour. As soon as people started reporting these uh, uh, Mothman and UFO sightings, people started seeing uh, these so-called men in black. Just like in the movies, you know, the black hats and sunglasses, and they were going around intimidating people, saying, don't talk about this. They didn't know if they were government agents, if they were law enforcement people, or if they were from another realm. We would see the men in black standing around on the street in the daytime. I mean, if I go to the bank and get change up the street, they'd be standing there, staring, just staring. Some of those witnesses started saying, hey, you know, these people are coming to our door and asking us questions and, and telling us not to talk about it to anybody. Uh, the local newspaper reporter, Mary Heyer, said they would come into her office and she didn't know them. They didn't identify themselves, but they were adamant about her not reporting 
these details to the newspaper and to the media. So that started to worry a few people because they didn't know what agenda these, these so-called men in black had, but they weren't real happy about people discussing the UFOs or the Mothman sightings. Ces hommes en noir ont bel et bien séjourné à Pointe Pleasant à l'époque où des phénomènes étranges étaient couramment observés. Mais qui étaient-ils Pourquoi sont-ils venus ici À ce jour, le mystère entourant cet épisode demeure entier. My brother wanted to come up to the TNT area to look for the Mothman because we'd heard about it that day in school. And we weren't within, I'd say, probably two, three blocks when my brother looked and saw something beside the car on my side of the driver's window. So my brother slammed on the brakes, and when he did, the car kind of turned sideways a little bit in the road. And when we did that thing, just stopped and jumped right onto the hood of the car. And it's just like we were just frozen in time for about I don't know, five seconds, five minutes, ten minutes, I don't know. Well, it looked through the windshield at us, and we looked at it through the windshield. After it left, my brother turned the car around, and we went straight to the sheriff's department in Point Pleasant. Le lendemain, les militaires bloquent l'accès à l'usine d'explosifs. So we went back up to the TNT area. There was two or three people standing over there on the side there talking to other military personnel, but they were in suits. So one of them come over here to the car, and he just put his hands on the wind. He said, you were told to leave. Now leave. Les résidents sont plus inquiets que jamais. Les choses semblent se corser. Ils savent que les militaires ne se déplacent que pour des motifs sérieux. Mais que cherche-t-il à Point Pleasant Là encore, le mystère se creuse. One of John Keel's books, he talks about, it may have been actually one of the Mothman prophecies, he talks about window areas, which are like um, parts, like areas of, of uh, land or some, like in various places around the earth and the globe, that uh, they're more akin to like paranormal activity. And I think that's what uh, Point Pleasant is. There were several people including John Keel, that was receiving uh, prophecies for future events, some of which came through, some of which didn't. Um, there were strange phone calls, and some of these calls involved voices that were giving these prophecies. The Mothman is something that scared a lot of people. I believe, personally, that there was such a creature I don't think, however, it was a UFO. I don't think it was an occupant from a, another planet. That is partially the belief system for a lot of people. Small town in the 60s, they didn't have all the lights and the glitz and the technology, so they simply would have enjoyed these stories, and it would have excited them and scared them. And fear can generate all kinds of responses. Dans une quête désespérée de réponses pouvant les éclairer, des résidents trouvent une explication dans des légendes amérindiennes. Some people felt that that went back years ago to a, to an Indian curse that w uh, was bestowed on the town of Point Pleasant by an Indian chief Cornstalk. Uh, what happened was is chief Cornstalk and his son both were murdered over a land dispute over you know with some settlers. And the story went that up, up on his dying breath, he cursed the town of Point Pleasant for the next 200 years. Uh, some people do believe that. But Chief Cornstalk did exist, uh, his son, and they, and they both were killed. Now, whether or not he did put that curse on the town of Point Pleasant remains a mystery. Of course, everything that happened, if we had uh, uh, a wreck happened, it was either Cornstalk or Mothman. Uh, if we had uh, a FAR or a power outage, or uh, mainly their power outages and stuff like that, they contributed to, to Mothman. As far as the Mothman goes, I, I believe it's just something we haven't discovered yet, or something that did exist and may have died. It's something natural. 
is what the bottom line is. Now, the supernatural element is as romantic and uh, as elegant as it is, will be very, very hard to prove. Autant d'événements inexpliqués ont de quoi laisser les résidents de Point Pleasant perplexes. Mais alors qu'ils tentent toujours de comprendre ce qui leur arrive, ils ne se doutent pas que le pire est encore à venir. In November of 1966, you know, the Mothman sightings began, the UFO activity, the men in black. Uh, all this was was going on at the same time. Apparently, people were getting thought patterns, like something bad is going to happen, something really terrible. People are having dreams, um, seeing presents floating in the water and so forth. Really weird, bizarre dreams, but they didn't take it to heart, really, because they just figured it was just a weird dream. In December of 1967, uh, December 15th, the Silver Bridge, which was a 40-year-old bridge right here in downtown Point Pleasant, collapsed uh, on a Friday evening during rush hour, uh, killed 46 people. This event brought more attention to Point Pleasant, besides the, the Mothman sightings. Some people felt that it was just a very odd timing to the Mothman activity and the UFO activity. They felt that there may have been some sort of a connection. Obviously, the it was a terrible tragedy. The, the, we knew most of the people that went down on the bridge. In fact, the, the parents of the mayor at that time was, was, were on the bridge. Uh, a little girl that was in my classroom was on the bridge with, with her parents. Some people claim to have seen a large bird flying back and forth across the river days before that bridge fell. There were other people that reported seeing men dressed in black clothing climbing up and down on that bridge. Now, whether those sightings or reports can be validated is, is another story, but people did come forth and say that. A controlled group conscious, if you will, is something where a group of people can see something, or one person will see it, and then another person will see it, and then it will go down in that group, in that community, whatever it is. It's definitely real. We saw it, I saw it too. Then it becomes hysteria. So in a small community, sure. I saw it, you saw it, it's real. And they're gonna stick by that. It almost becomes a religious experience. Now, another aspect to that is the belief system. Once you believe in something so, so strongly, it will stay with you over years and years and years. And even something that didn't really occur or something that was mis misunderstood will still be just as strong 40, 50 years later. Because they're gonna remember it exactly the way they experienced it. They saw something that was very frightening to them and fascinating. A lot of those people were not real thrilled about seeing it. Uh, they didn't, uh, some of them would not even go out at nighttime. You know, they, they became reclusive. Um, they felt that something was always looking over their shoulder or in their area of, of where they were, very paranoid. They didn't really like the attention they were getting from, from the townspeople because people th thought they were crazy or, you know, loony or whatever. And that's why a lot of those witnesses, even to this day, will not discuss it. They won't admit that it didn't happen. They, they will tell me it did happen. They saw it with their own eyes. But that's, that's all they want to say about it. L'intérêt de Jeff pour les phénomènes étranges date de son enfance. Tout jeune, il cherchait déjà à élucider le mystère Mothman. Aujourd'hui, après avoir passé des années à accumuler les possibles éléments de preuve, la créature n'a plus de secret pour lui, ni les lieux mystérieux où les événements se sont déroulés. Okay, these, these structures have been here for well over 60 years. They're relatively untouched. As you can see all the detail on these, you, you can actually walk underneath, you know, look underneath, and, and they're very eerie, especially at night, especially when the fog starts setting out here. They're basically the same as they were back during World War II. When the war ended, uh, they just left everything. They never tore anything down. And uh, during the Mothman sightings, you know, a lot of people thought that whatever this thing was, 
was either roosting or staying in this, this general area up here in the TNT area. La tragédie du Silver Bridge est le point culminant de la série d'événements qui secoue Point Pleasant depuis deux ans. Pendant que des explications très rationnelles tentent d'éclaircir les circonstances de cette catastrophe, certains y voient un lien direct avec les apparitions mystérieuses. Some people say that the uh, Mothman had something to do with the Silver Bridge falling. My answer to that is the Silver Bridge fell because of a cracked eye bar. There was one eye bar that was uh, prior to the uh, Ohio uh, Tower on the bridge. It cracked, and that is what caused the bridge to fall. Now, the 13th pin, strangely enough, that held the bridge together, and scientifically speaking, or engineer, from an engineer's point of view, when they did test on the bridge after the accident, after it collapsed, they said that it was no wonder it didn't collapse earlier. It was old bridge, it was out of date, it needed to be changing. That's a matter of record. The fact that it was the 13th pin that went added, you know, another supernatural element to it. And it's great for the urban legend. It, it adds to it, makes it, it adds to the mystery. There are other people who say that the uh, Mothman was a, sort of a, an omen of the bridge falling. I don't know where they got that idea. Well, in the 60s, they had very bad, very poor, or it was just neglect in their uh, disposal of some of the byproducts of that uh, TNT factory. So it got into the aquifer. And the aquifer is the main water source, and they would have used it. And even though they may have had purification processes, which I'm sure got, gets out a lot of the uh, pollutants and carcinogens and what have you, some of it may have gotten through and may have caused a hallucinogenic effect. If, possibly, if the ground was saturated with some kind of unknown pollutant that caused a hallucinogenic effect, and you saw a true-life cryptozoological cryptid creature, you're going to start seeing all kinds of different things. And what looked, what is going to be totally natural to uh, a biologist or an ornithologist or something like that, even with their amazement, to people like you and me who's never seen these things before, it's going to be frightening. I believe there's a lot of things that I just don't understand. And with that, I take it with a grain of salt, but I don't discredit what people are saying they're seeing. Les hypothèses pour tenter de percer le mystère Mothman vont dans tous les sens, y compris celui de la cryptozoologie, soit quelque part entre le mythe et la légende urbaine. What do I think it is? I think uh, it does belong, the, the creature itself belong in the realm of cryptozoology. I think that uh, crypto meaning it's something different, something out of place, not natural to be found. And every once in a while, nature spits out something that shouldn't be there. And I think this is one such case. There were uh, several eyewitness descriptions and accounts of some of these Mothman sightings that pointed towards the possibility of, of it being maybe a thunderbird or a prehistoric bird. Um, I had actually talked to one lady who saw it in, in daylight in the TNT area, and she described it as a prehistoric bird. Some people felt that, that the Mothman may have actually been a thunderbird or something extinct. It's like any other crypto-type monster, like the Bigfoot legend, or in, or in the state of Florida, the skunk ape, or something like that. Many people say, yes, absolutely exist. We've seen it. We don't know what it is. Why aren't we catching these things? You'd think they would leave some kind of evidence. Uh, you know, well, what about a body? You know, anthropologists and, and archaeologists, they need these things, empirical data, to, to believe in it. And without that, it's going to remain in the realm of folklore or, or myth. 
D'autres hypothèses penchent du côté de la transformation de la nature par des substances radioactives. I wish there were a lot more supernatural creatures that would make life more interesting. But I think in this case, it was just something that existed, uh, does exist still, and occasionally came out of there. He could have been mutated. It could have been mutated by that particular area, which was the grounds are poisoned. They still are even to this day. The EPA is trying to clean that up. Sometimes, uh, like if you remember the old B monster movies, you know, they, they got radiation or something that gets gigantic and what have you. In those cases, radiation just kills, pure and simple. But every once in a while, it alters DNA, it alters growth patterns and so forth in plants and in people. You know, after uh, uh, World War II, you can find all kinds of different effects from radiation for those who survived. Uh, frightening effects that make humans look non-human. So this could happen in nature too. And I think that's also a credible possibility. I think after the Silver Bridge collapsed, the, the whole town was in a state of shock. I mean, they'd never seen a disaster, you know, on that, that scale of, you know, 46 people, uh, you know, perishing in a, in a bridge disaster. It was the worst, worst bridge disaster in, in American history, still, still is. But I think it, it you know, it, it's, there was so much going on. People had a hard time um, absorbing all of the, the activity and the attention. But, you know, people still, you know, we're in the TNT area, you know, years and years, even to this day. It's, it's really difficult to, to say that, that that book will ever be closed on, you know, what this Mothman or large bird actually was. That's the whole beauty of the, the Mothman stories. People are always looking for answers. Mothman will probably always be around. I think the idea of this creature will always be around. It may indeed be something from the realms of complete supernatural, and it may blow our socks off someday by presenting itself. Maybe it is an alien life. I can't discount that. My personal belief system is that it's just a misidentification. It's a great story, though. I think if, if 20 years ago, somebody would have came forth and said, this is what it was, here's the proof, here's the documentation, book closed. You know, we wouldn't be sitting here right now. We just don't know until it dies in the woods and the forestry department picks it up and it becomes news and it goes in the classroom school books, it's gonna remain the monster that we know it is today. Que les gens y croient ou non, qu'ils en aient peur ou non, qu'ils méritent une place ou non dans l'histoire officielle, Tous sont d'accord sur un fait. Mothman a apporté non seulement la prospérité à Point Pleasant, mais aussi la célébrité. The movie changed things by putting us out there, putting Point Pleasant on the map. A big part of the climatic part of the movie is the bridge falling. Then now everyone wants to ask you about the Mothman, and, and anywhere you travel, if you're from Point Pleasant, always the first thing someone asks you about is, is the Mothman. But people had a hard time seeing that movie in town. Uh, it, it's hard to watch that bridge fall, and it's hard to watch the, the Mothman parts about it. When that movie came out, the floodgates just opened, and you know the, the town was just overrun. You know, people coming here. You know, they wanted to go where the, uh, you know, the, this actually happened. I knew right then that it, it, would, it would change the town. But you know, uh, whether you believe in the Mothman or not, it's done a lot for Point Pleasant. Mothman Festival is the single biggest attractor from throughout the country and the world than we have in, here in Point Pleasant. You can't 
drive down Main Street because it's full of people. And they come from all over the world. I, we've had people from China, Australia, Japan, England. They come from every place to come to this Mothman Festival. After the movie, The Mothman Prophecies came out, Jeff and Carolyn Harris came up with this idea that we should have a festival each year to bring all of the people that would be interested in something like that. I was talking to Carolyn one day and I said, you know, um, we ought to try maybe a Mothman festival or a convention, something like that. That's, this was in November of 2002. This was just months after the movie came out. And we, we decided to give it a go. We decided like in October of that year to have it. So we only had a month. We didn't advertise. Uh, we, didn't, we didn't really get it out to the media much, but we had four or 500 people just show up by word of mouth. And that was the catalyst for what now is the 12th year of the Mothman Festival. And we have speakers at the State Theater. We have entertainment on the Riverfront Park. And sometimes we have karaoke contests. We've had a weightlifting contest there. Uh, we have a lot of vendors out here, a lot of souvenirs. We have a witness panel that we pay to sit there and answer questions. People want to ask them in direct, for sure. You know, what did you see? They want to ask them. They like that uh, out there. And we try to add something every year. We have a, a 5K race. We have a big uh, Mothman beauty pageant. From the Mothman, glowing red eyes, 10 feet tall, baby, that's no lie. In the Mothman Festival pageant, we have moth wear, which is where contestants wear jeans, and then they are to incorporate the color green into their outfit. And we get wings sometimes. Contestants have wings. Sometimes uh, contestants just they want to show their personality so they're real stylish and upbeat. Um, they also compete in evening gown and onstage question. And what the judges usually try to look for is just a natural girl who is just wanting to really promote the Mothman Festival pageant and not just be after the crown and sash, but actually to promote the festival. I won in 2010. It was really actually quite surprising because I'd never done a pageant before, so I was really nervous. And I'd always liked the Mothman and all that stuff. So I thought, hey, why not? Let's try it. And then lo and behold, I won, which was absolutely insane. But the uh, pageant was actually really cool. Like we got to learn the Mothman dance, which was really fun. Mothman, he's not from Japan. He's genuine American. <laughs> People come from all over the world, literally, and that's why we call it the world's only Mothman Museum. But we have props, we have very rare archives, we had a lot of John Keel memorabilia, we carry merchandise, and we started, uh, you know, just opening two or three days a week. Now we're open seven days a week. And we're knowledgeable, people want to come in and, and ask us questions. We show documentaries and things like that. I really enjoy being a tour guide. I meet people from all over the world. It's really cool. We can take them up to the T area, let them see everything as far as different sites of Point Pleasant, um, tell them different stories um, that I've been told throughout the years about the Mothman and all the different encounters with him, stories I've actually heard from the eyewitnesses themselves. Then we get out and we check out the igloos and look at the first uh, where the first sighting was. Um, it's really, really entertaining. I enjoy it. Les igloos sont en fait des dômes en béton armé où on stockait des munitions à l'époque de la Deuxième Guerre mondiale. Although there were never really actually any Mothman sightings reported in, in the igloos, it's still a fascinating part, a fascinating part of the history of the TNT area. Uh, as you can see, the four foot thick walls. A lot of paranormal groups frequent the, the igloos because they, you know, they want to try to catch the orbs and different pictures and, and things like that. So it's, uh, it's a vital part of the Mothman history and uh, I think it needs to be researched a, a little more. Yeah. 
presque 50 ans après les premières apparitions de Mothman, les discours sont tout autres. Autrefois considérés comme leur pire cauchemar, Mothman est aujourd'hui un symbole de fierté pour les habitants de Point Pleasant. The Mothman is, is, is such a creature that uh, it's hard not to look at. He's, he sort of takes after Loch Ness Monster and, and Bigfoot, but I think ours is a little more exciting because he, uh, he just shows up everywhere and there's so much, uh, so many stories behind him that it's changed our town. One of the main attractions here in downtown Point Pleasant is the world-famous uh, Mothman statue. That statue came about uh, two, three years after the movie was released, and a local artist who works in stainless steel uh, named Bob Roach created that uh, statue after sitting down with some of the, Mo the Mothman witnesses and uh, eyewitnesses and things like that, and he came, his, came to his own you know, version of that Mothman, but people all over the world come to get their picture taken with that, uh, that statue. We unveiled the statue in a, in a ceremony that attracted national news. Uh, CBS Sunday Morning came and it shocked all of us. We thought it would just be a few people from around town and maybe a couple local stations, but uh, we immediately went on national TV when, when the statue was unveiled. It's a really uh, nice piece of, of artwork you know, and a lot of detail and things like that, but it's, it's a nice centerpiece to, to, to let people know, you know, what all happened here. Mothman is a big part of the history of Point Pleasant. There's other pieces of history, too. We have a Mothman tram that run, goes around through town. You can board it out here, and it'll take you to all of our entities that we have, uh, River Museum, behind the flood wall for the murals, uh, the Silver Bridge Memorial, uh, anything, anything we have, the Fort Randolph going on, but the tram will take you to show you that we have more than just Mothman. We have the history and the mystery. Families come from all over. Groups come, bus tours come, governors come and get their picture taken with the Mothman. It's not a true uh, visit to Point Pleasant unless you get your picture taken with the Mothman. I don't know how to explain it, but they're here every day, just about all year long. I don't care if it's raining, snowing, or what, there's people getting their picture taken with the Mothman. It's, it's really been a phenomenon that uh, you would never think about, but it's here. I can't say for sure whether it's real or not. Uh, I just know that there's a tremendous amount of evidence uh, that it is. We invite everybody to come here. We we'll take them and, and show them all, all the different uh, attractions that are geared, geared towards it and we'll let them make up their mind for themselves. The Mothman is a big thing with a lot of people. Uh, it's kind of put Point Pleasant on the map in most recent years. And people come just because they've heard of it. And it's sort of mysterious. And they want to see what it looks like. Uh, we have the statue in, in town. And um, so that's something that's visible to them, you know. We have so much American history here. We have a lot of agricultural history. Obviously, we have paranormal history. Plus, we just like having visitors. It, we, we really enjoy the people that come. Uh, everyone in town gets out and speaks to everyone, and uh, they get out on Main Street and sit in their rocking chairs and, and talk to all the folks that come in. It's, it's a perfect way to get people to come to Point Pleasant and, and then have a look around, and they may find something else they didn't know about. The people with the Mothman, they're never going to stop coming. We know that. and, and uh, we, we enjoy all the different ones that come.